backdash. So the inflammation process starts with some sort of stimulus. In this case, it's trauma to a peripheral nerve through a splinter. And so that causes mast cells to be activated by the appropriate ligand, and that has three direct reactions. The first of which is the production of arachidonic acid. Arachidonic acid is an unsaturated fatty acid that's found in the bilipid membrane of the cell. And it is produced by linoleic acid, which is found in a lot of foods. And so it produces prostaglandin H2, which is the substrate for the cyclooxygenase pathway. So COX, which is COX for short. So in COX-1 pathway, thromboxanes are produced, and that leads to blood vessel constriction and the aggregation of platelets. And then in the COX-2 pathway, prostaglandins are produced, and those stimulate pain receptors. Now, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, or NSAIDs, work by blocking the COX-1 and or the COX-2 pathway. But blocking the COX-1 pathway might be dangerous because it produces, in addition to thromboxanes, a type of prostaglandin, which is vital for the production of the mucosal membrane of the stomach. And so if those are thinned out, then the stomach ulcers might be a problem, and that may lead to a series of other problems. And so the COX-1 inhibitors that are more common are acetylsalicylic acid and ibuprofen, but naproxen is safe because it only blocks COX-2. And acetaminophen doesn't do anything for inflammation. It is merely antipyretic and analgesic. And so arachidonic acid also activates the 5 lipoxygenase pathway, which produces leukotrienes, which are primarily responsible for the bronchoconstriction associated with an asthmatic attack. And then the mast cells also produce histamines, which cause the endothelial cells to gap and cause the redness and swelling associated with inflammation. Now this next step is probably the most important in pathogenesis of all of these diseases we'll be talking about later. And that's the degranulation of the mast cells. And these, gra and these granules can contain a whole bunch of pro-inflammatory mediators, such as chemokines, TNF, interleukin-1, 6, and all of those um, pro-inflammatory mediators. And so TNF binds to macrophages, and that causes the macrophages to produce their own pro-inflammatory mediators. And then um, the chemokines attract white blood cells, which leads to an increased release and accumulation of free radicals due to the increased uptake of oxygen. And then it has a pro-inflammatory and anti-inflammatory um, effect. In the pro-inflammatory pathway, the dorsal root ganglion produces pro-inflammatory mediators. And then also IL-1 beta is produced which leads to the production of prostaglandin E2. And then in the anti-inflammatory pathway, IL-1 beta raw is produced. And IL-1 beta raw is an antagonist to IL-1 beta, and it works by binding to sites where IL-1 beta would bind, but it doesn't cause the same effect that IL-1 beta would produce.